This is part 26 of Angular 6 tutorial. By default, an Angular 6 project uses RxJS version 6. We can verify this by looking at package.json file. Notice the Angular version is 6 and the RxJS version is also 6. So in this video, we'll discuss using RxJS 6 operators in Angular 6 services. This video will also lay the common foundation for upgrading RxJS operators every time the RxJS version changes in your Angular project. In the project that we've been working with so far in this video series, we need to do some groundwork before we can create an Angular service. First, we need to create a fake online REST API. We discussed how to do this in detail in part 63 of our Angular CRUD tutorial. Our first step to create a fake online REST API is to install an npm package called JSON server. Here is the command npm install. We want to install it globally, so hyphen g, and the name of the package is JSON server. I have already executed this command, so I'm not going to do that again. Our next step is to create a file called db.json in the root project folder. This file is going to act as the database for the fake online REST API. This file contains the employee data that we want to serve using the REST API. Notice we have the employee ID, full name, etc. in addition to an array of skills. The shape of this data matches with what we have on this create employee form. Our final step is to start the fake REST API server. For that, let's launch another command prompt vendor. Navigate to the project folder. And then the command to start the fake REST API server is this json server dash dash watch. And the file that we want to watch is db.json. Remember, this is the file that contains the employee data that we want this fake REST API to serve. Now, when we navigate to this URI, we should see the data that we have in our db.json file. Notice when we navigate to localhost colon 3000, we see a resource with name employees. The resource name is employees because within our db.json file, we named the property employees. When we navigate to this URI, that is localhost colon 3000 for slash employees, we see all the data that we have in our db.json file. We are going to consume this REST API service from our Angular 6 project. To represent an employee, we need a type. We can do that either by creating a class or an interface. I'm going to do that by creating an interface. Notice the interface name is iEmployee and it contains these properties ID, full name, email, phone, contact preference and an array of skills. And to represent a skill, we have another interface and that is iSkill and it contains these three properties skill name, experience in years and proficiency. So let's create these two interfaces now. First, let's create iSkill interface. Since it's related to an employee, let's place it in the employee folder. Next, let's create iEmployee interface. We have the two types we need, that is iSkill and iEmployee. Now, we need an Angular service that's going to call this REST API service. I'm going to place that Angular service in a file with name employee.service dot ts. I'm not going to create this service from scratch because we discuss services in detail in part 30 of our Angular CRUD tutorial. Instead, what I'm going to do is open the project that we have built as part of this Angular CRUD course and that project is right here. Notice the name of the project is Angular CRUD and the version of Angular we are using in this project is 5 and RxJS version is 5.5. Now what I'm going to do is copy the employee service implementation from the Angular CRUD project and paste it within our Angular 6 project. Remember, out of the box, Angular 6 project uses RxJS version 6, whereas within this Angular CRUD project, we are using RxJS version 5.5. Now there are several breaking changes between RxJS 5 and RxJS 6. Now let's see what those changes are and how our code changes when building an Angular service. The way we import some of the classes like subject, observable, etc. has changed between RxJS 5 and 6. 
In RxJS 5, we would import observable and subject like this, whereas in RxJS 6, we do it like this. So, if we take a look at the employee service that we pasted in Angular 6 project, notice we have a red squiggly under observable here. That's because in RxJS 6, to import the observable, we do it from RxJS. We don't need the slash observable. The moment we do that, notice the red squiggly goes away. We have another red squiggly here. This has got nothing to do with RxJS. Now, in our project, we have iEmployee interface and we want to import this type from this iEmployee.ts file. And this file is present in the same folder where we have the employee service. So let's change this import statement. We want to import iEmployee and this is present in this file. In addition to classes, the way we import operators also changed in RxJS 6. In RxJS 5, if we want to import catch error operator, we may do it like this. Whereas in RxJS 6, we do it like this. We import all the operators from RxJS slash operators. For example, if you want to import map, delay, etc. In addition to catch error, you include all those operators within the same pair of curly braces here. So all the operators are imported from RxJS slash operators in RxJS 6. Notice we have a red squiggly under error observable. This is because this class is removed from RxJS version 6. In addition to this class, there are many other classes like array observable, empty observable, etc. that are removed from RxJS version 6. These classes are replaced by existing or new operators that perform the same operations. In RxJS 5, to create an error observable, we can either use the new keyword or create method on the error observable class, whereas in RxJS 6, it is replaced by this throw error function. If you're wondering, as a developer, how would I know what has changed between version 5 and 6? Well, all that information is available on the update guide at this URL. Here is that update guide showing us all the differences between version 5 and version 6. At the moment, we have a red squiggly under error observable. So I want to know how this class has changed in RxJS version 6. So on the update guide, I press Ctrl F and then search for error observable. And it leads me to this table. Notice all these observable classes have been removed from version 6. So all these classes in version 5 are replaced with these functions in version 6. So error observable is replaced by throw error function. Because this function is replacing a class, the way we import this function is very similar to how we import other classes like observable, subject, etc. So in addition to importing observable from RxJS, we also want to import throw error. At the moment, we are not using any of these operators. So let's delete them. Instead of using the error observable class, let's use this throw error function. At the moment, the only errors that are left are on the type that we are returning from these methods. We are returning employee type and we don't have that employee type in our project. What we have instead is iEmployee interface. So let's return iEmployee instead of employee. As you can see, our employee service has all the required methods to perform all the CRUD operations. That is, create, read, update, and delete employees. This Angular service issues calls to our REST API service available at this URL. This method returns us the list of all employees. This private reusable method is used to handle any errors when making the REST API calls. This method returns an employee by ID adds a new employee, updates an existing employee, and finally deletes an employee by ID. Now what we want to do is call this 
get employees method which is going to return us the list of all employees once we have the list of all employees from the service we want to display them like this we are going to use this list employees component to display the employees so within the component class first let's import our employee service and i employee type now let's inject the employee service using the constructor this employee service returns us an array of i employee objects so to store them we need a property i'm going to call it employees finally we need to call get employees method of our employee service i'm going to do that in ng on init lifecycle hook When the request completes successfully, we're going to get the list of employees back. I'm going to call the parameter list employees and we're going to use it to populate the employees property that we have right here. If there is an error processing the request, let's log it to the console. Now let's look at the changes required in the template. We want to bind to this employee's property because it contains the list of employees whose details we want to display. In the interest of time, I've already copied the required HTML. So let me paste it in the template right here. This is straightforward HTML. We are looping through the list of employees that we have in the employee's property in our component class and then displaying their full name, email, phone, contact preference, and an edit button. So let's save all our changes and then run our project. Notice we don't see anything on the page and when we launch browser developer tools we have an error and the error says no provider for employee service so we need to register our employee service. Let's do that within our root application module app module. First, let's import our employee service and include employee service within the providers array. Notice now we have a different error, no provider for HTTP client. Notice within our employee service, we are using the Angular's HTTP client service. Now we have to import HTTP client module in our root application module. So first, let's include the required import statement. And then within the import array, we need to include HTTP client module. Notice now we see the list of employees as expected. When we click this edit button, we want to display this employee details on this form. We want to display their full name, contact preference, email, etc. We also want to display all their skill sets here so we can edit and save their details. In our next video, we'll discuss how to implement edit operation in a reactive form. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.